Hi, my name is Joe Norman, and I'm a Partner Solutions Architect at AWS. Today, I'm going to give you a demo walkthrough of how to use Amazon AppFlow to transfer data from Slack to Amazon S3. Without further ado, let's get into the AWS Management Console and search for AppFlow and go right to it. In this big orange button here, you press Create Flow. You can also navigate from the left here and press Flows, then Create Flow, but for simplicity's sake, just do it from here. Do a little metadata for the flow that we're creating. So I'm going to call it Slack to S3. You can give it any name you want. Description can be any amount of text, any text that you want. I'll just put some text here. That's a totally optional field. For encryption, the service encrypts in transit and at rest by default. But you can choose to use your own AWS key management service keys if you want to do that. I'm going to use the default. You can also tag it. Um, again, this is optional. Uh, I would maybe want to do company if I had multiple companies under this account as an example and put a sample tag there. But again, that's optional. Now that we've done that metadata, let's do, let's actually configure the flow. So first, your source. So this is a demo for Slack. So I'm going to choose Slack, but you can see some of the current sources that are available at time of recording. And press connect. And now is the most technically involved part of the flow creation. So most of these I need to get from Slack, so I'm going to go in there in a second, but I do know my workspace URL. And now I'm going to flip over to Slack. So on the left here, I've got api.slack.com, and I just clicked Build App on that page. Uh, on the right, I've got the AWS documentation for Amazon AppFlow, and it shows some of the things I need to know for building a flow with Slack. So first in the Slack side, I'm going to make an app name. Create app. That's going to take me into some settings. So I'm going to go into permissions because I'll need to add these permissions and set a region or set a redirect URL. I'm going to add a redirect URL. The instructions here on the AWS side on the right give me the formatting instructions for that. And I've got it set for my region, US West 2 or Oregon. Add that. Minimize this so I can see the scopes I need. So now I'm going to add user token scopes. So I'm going to add them here and just start typing the ones I need. So those are, if you look on the right, it lists all the ones I need. So, so now that I've got all those scopes set, I'm going to install the app on my workspace. This is something. Oh, actually I need to save that URL first. Now install the app on my workspace. Allow these scopes. We've got an OS, OAuth access token here. I don't need that to use AppFlow. So what I need is to go into basic information on the left under settings. I need the client ID and client secret. So I'm going to copy this into my notepad. And the client secret, I'm going to regenerate it. Just because and use client secret. Paste that here. All right. And with that, I should be able to flip back to AppFlow. So I have that client secret still on my clipboard. Client ID. And I can give the connection a name. So we'll call it Slack AppFlow. Not the most descriptive name, but. Now you may be prompted to sign in here, but I'm already signed in on another tab. And I'm gonna allow these permissions. And now your connection should be good. As long as you don't get a red warning up top, you're good. After that, I can choose the Slack objects I wanna be able to pull data from. So I'm gonna do conversations, currently the only one available. And you can choose your channel. I'm gonna choose general. This is your channel in Slack. And if these are these with the hash marks here. Uh, and then your destination. So right now you can do Redshift, S3, Salesforce, or Snowflake, and I'm going to do S3. Choose your bucket, and if you want to do a prefix, so I've got a bucket made for it, and a prefix. I'm going to use the general channel when I transfer data, so I'm going to make a prefix for general. You also choose the data type that you want to do, the format of the output. So it defaults to JSON. You can also use CSV or Parquet. 
and do some other settings as well. I'm just going to keep it as JSON. For the flow trigger, you can run on demand, which means when you push a button, the app flow will run. We'll go pull the data from Slack. You also choose to run on a schedule, which gives you settings kind of like setting a recurring meeting in your uh, email client, your calendar client. And it also, for Slack, only allows you to transfer new data, meaning if you do run it on a schedule, it's only going to pull data from the last stop point, from the last time that it ran the flow, so you don't get repeated data. All right, press Next. And here's where you map fields from Slack. So you can see the Conversations API, all the different fields available to you for the general channel. I'm going to go ahead and map all of them. And then it just determines what the name is in Slack and what it'll be in your S3 output file. For any given field, you can choose to mask the value. So for example, if you had something with PII in it, personally identifiable information, you could choose to mask it, so mask, mask the X number of characters, say as a social security number, you mask, mask characters in the social security number so it doesn't show up in the output if that's important for your use case. Next, you can do validation, which means you can choose to decide if a row or the entire flow is valid and, and you want to include it based on the value in that in that field. So for example, I only want I only want a to include row, uh, include messages in my conversation if there is a user attached to it. So if someone actually wrote that message, don't know how it would be possible otherwise, but let's just use it for an example. So if in the case I get a, a user missing or null on a message, I'm going to ignore that record. You can do multiple validations, but here I'm just going to do one. Next is filters, which is similar in concept of validation. Um, you'll kind of get the idea with the example. So I'm going to do timestamp. I only want to include, I'm filtering out things that don't meet this condition. So I only want to include messages in the conversation if they're after a set date. So I'm going to just do this week, uh, this week and after. So 9.13, today is 9.18 or September 18th or 13.9, depending on where you're watching this from. And now we've got a summary screen. So we just went through all that. No need to go through it again. And I'm going to create the flow. Now that I've created it, since it's on demand, it's not going to run automatically. I need to run the flow. And it should just take a few seconds to complete. Depending on the amount of data you have, it could take longer than a few seconds, but don't have a lot in there, as you'll see soon. Gives you a link directly to where it's stored in S3. Let's go into this partition, and you can download the file. I'm going to save it, I'm going to go into the folder. I'm just going to do a quick rename and add, uh oh, just wanted to add .json to the end. So my operating system will know what program to open it with, and that program will know how to format it. It's opening here in VS Code. And let's format it to make it easier to see. And this is what your output looks like. So it's got each message in here in the format that the Slack API outputs. I'll show you real quick what that looks like. So this is a demo message is one of them. So let's flip over to my Slack channel. Okay, this is a demo message. Let's see if I can make that a little bigger real quick. Got replies and got some other stuff in there. And that's it for the demo. Thanks for joining.